wake up in the morning in this great blue state. Golden fingers caress my face. Slips through the window. Guys, welcome to ASFN. Spring is upon us, and that means summer fish are coming. I'm going to do a tennis racket string trace that we use for catching diamonds, honeycombs, and sandies. Very simple. It works extremely well. It's very high abrasive resistant tennis racket string and it's got quite a bit of stretch in it. What we require for it are a standard pair of pliers, side cutters, um, our mustard scissors for fine work, some Maxima 36 kilo, some heat shrink, this is 2.4 mil, uh, our power swivel size 3, our trusted mustard tuna circle hooks tennis racket string and of course our big power swivels number one one oh it's up to you okay to start off with let's just get rid of all of this tennis racket string you can purchase from most sports shops it's just your standard uh, tennis racket uh, string that they use there's nothing fancy about it 1.3 mil 1.4 mil wilson's does work the best by far we're going to take about one and a half meters do this 1.4 1.6 it's up to you depending on uh, your casting ability okay so that's our tennis racket string i trust the old mustard nanos they've been around for some time now it's one of the few hooks for diamonds that I trust and use all the time. Um, it's excellent as far as pulling, hooking, unhooking goes. Okay, first put those glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, to knot it, easiest way is a figure of eight. So what we do is we give ourselves a nice bit of tag in there. And we just go around the finger one, two, three times. Take it back through the back and pull it out it's as simple as that nothing fancy about it and then all you do is with this hand you just start pulling the actual tennis racket string and you can see nicely how it's actually forming a figure of eight there we go guys find something strong that you can actually pull onto burglar guard door handle over here I don't have too many items that I can actually pull on so I'm just gonna do this slide it through pull as hard as I can Grab my pliers. Be careful when doing that. <coughs> there we go. Cut off the tag end. And that's basically what it looks like once you've actually tied that figure of eight onto it. It's pretty much a snell around the actual shank. Of course it does the, the standard um, U shape that you're looking for in a circle look. And you can see it's very flexible about 500 about 500 down over there I'm gonna take a piece of nylon maxima anything that you can get your hands on 26 27 kilo it's up to you and all I'm gonna do is just a couple of figure of eights around it so one two three four go through the back come out and with this hand again I'm just pulling it to form the figure of eight there we go you can see all four of them are coming together just squeeze them a little bit just so that they are close to one another so there is your figure of eight on the tennis racket string uh, my trusty mustard uh, braid scissors and just cut off all the little tag ends as close as I can and all we do is we just do it again what it is is basically a stopper knot that I'm creating at the moment. There we go, four times around. Instead of using crimps that we normally use on wire, I just find this seems to work a lot better. It doesn't damage the nylon in any way. Some people use a little bit of super glue, which won't damage the tennis racket string let me just cut that off nice and neatly so there we go there's our two stopper knots 
We don't push them up against one another because again we're going to be using heat shrink and heat shrink needs something to bite into to actually stop the knot from moving. So we give a little bit of space between it over there. Just a little trick. Take a bit of our heat shrink. Start from the top. Slide it down. A little bit of lubrication. They go in the drawer, huh? they go like that. Now, a little trick that I've learned while doing it is if you actually move it down to where the knot starts over there, just give it a little bit of, not even a mill of actual plastic going over the knot and allow a lot more on the left hand side of the actual thing. This is going to suck down tight. The knots are going to suck down over there where the actual um, heat shrink hugs into it and it won't move. The longer you make this, the less chance you've got of actually making this whole thing slide down if you throw it too hard or if you haven't tied a good knot. Okay, now what we're going to do is heat from a kettle definitely works the best. So I'm going to quickly run through to our tea room and just melt this quickly. I'll be two seconds. I'm back! Basically what I did is I just went to the kettle, the steam from the kettle gives off obviously, well, the, the water boiling gives off steam, steam obviously is very hot, and it actually melts the heat shrink without damaging the nylon. So if you have a look there you can see that the, the heat shrink has come up to just where the knot starts, and again there's an indentation where the next knot starts and it comes over and goes down, and you can pull that as hard as you want, it won't come off. But that's basically how we do it on nylon instead of using a crimp. Okay, secondly, we need a bead. So I'm just going to grab a little bead quickly. Little clear bead. You know me, I always love my little clear beads. Slide that down to where the knot is. So now you have your clear bead on there. We're going to take our number three power swivel there we go and we're going to slide our number three power swivel all the way down and the reason we use number three is it's got a lot thicker eye on it so it holds better especially when you're throwing heavy duty sinkers eight ounce seven ounce sinkers um, if you're using too light a nylon, it could cut it, um, the knot, basically, over there. Okay. Next, we're going to take our number one power swivel, or one it doesn't really make a, too much of a difference. And the reason that we use such a heavy duty swivel is so that when you grab it, you've got something to actually hold on to. Braid being so thin, leader line, 200 pound leader line being so thin, you could actually hurt yourself. Now to tie it, it's very simple. Again, all we're going to do is a figure of eight. Once, twice, three times. Go through the back with the tag end over there. And we just open it up to form the figure of eight. There's the figure of eight. Pull tight, slide down, take our trusty pliers and just give it a little bit of a pull there just to just tighten it up. Now what I do is I normally stick that inside, put it around my knees, and I'm just going to do this quickly just to make sure it pulls tight. <coughs> and there we go. Now my knot has actually pulled tight. If you have a look there you can see it's lay, it lays properly against the side. Take our side cutters, just cut off the tag end. So now when you hold it, at least you've got something to hold on to when you're pulling when your whoever it is that's helping you has got something to actually hold on to when they're pulling the diamond up and there's your swivel sliding down it perfectly comes to the knot it stops next step is to put our nylon onto our swivel so very simple maxima i find 36 kilo up to one more more than adequate for it got a nice piece off attach that 
again just with a plain simple figure of eight so let's go one two three back through the back and there we go there's your figure of eight bit of lubrication slide it down <coughs> pull tight now what we're going to do is just measure off how big our dangle is going to be so we just take a dangle quickly okay so that's how far we want it to be still we need to tie our knot so our, to our knot is going to be about that much nylon that we're going to waste so let's just cut it off there we go sinker clip Open up nicely, grab one sinker clip out. And again, just tie a figure of eight onto it. One, two, three. Back through the eye. Pull tight. Let your knot seat properly. Bit of lubrication and slide it down. Cut the tag end off, attach your sinker, it's as simple as that. I find most of these sinker clips are too bent in, if you, I can call it that. So what I do is I just take the back of a knife or scissors and just slightly open it a bit more. It just releases a lot quicker and easier when it actually hits the water by just opening it up, giving it a little bit more of an angle to it. So there, is our entire trace all done. So simple as that guys. That's my go to summertime trace for diamonds, sandies, honeycones on the north coast. Trust the old tennis racket string, can't go wrong with it. 9-0 tuna circle, that's the mustard version. It's offset, so you do get a, a better hook set. And that's it, simple as that. Summer is coming, boys. Make your traces now, get ready for it. Enjoy.